Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Async Test Automation, with Head of Quality at GoodRx, Priyanka Halder. So just to give you a quick intro about our guest speaker, Priyanka has over a decade worth of quality assurance experience, ranging from startups to billion dollar companies, including GoodRx, Heal, Homey, and TrueCar. She currently heads the quality engineering team in GoodRx, a multi-billion dollar company serving each month more than one, uh, 10 million Americans as their number one price transparency platform for prescri prescription drugs. Priyanka has ex extensive QA experience, including managing QA teams and implementing innovative technologies and work processes, such as visual validation, test, stabilization pipelines, and CICD. In addition, she's frequently invited to speak at international software testing conferences, such as Women in Tech, Test Leadership Congress NYC, Star Canada, Contest, Contest NYC, and many more. And of course, I strongly recommend following her on Twitter. So without any further ado, I think it's best to let her speak now. Priyanka, the stage is yours. Thank you, Adi, and uh, thank you everybody for joining this uh, webinar today. Um, I'm going to talk about how a high performance uh, test team work in a startup world. And I hope it will be pretty interesting to see um, how we ace this in today's aura jenner with various kind of machine learning tools uh, one of them is, will be apply tools that i'm going to showcase so let's get started um brief agenda for tonight is a little bit introduction about me a little more personal than my professional career um, then i'm going to talk about uh, how i came up with this term high performance testing what is it about why do we need it to be successful and how do we achieve it in a startup world without getting burned out or with having a work-life balance and the next section will be a case study on my current company GoodRx. Um, which has adopted um, a grand automation uh, infrastructure within eight months um, of my team being built. Um, so it's fascinating how we achieved it. Uh, achieved it, And uh, then the last section will be ask me anything and uh, feedbacks are welcome to you. So a small one minute intro about uh, um, myself. So this is the second topic I am talking, which is 2020. Um, but last year, I was invited to speak about same topic eight times. Uh, people liked it so much about scaling our automation uh, in GoodRx. And I have more than 13 years of experience doing what I do. Um, as uh, Adi, Adi already mentioned, um, I'm an avid traveler. My core competencies are persistent. I love to learn and some leadership skills. Um, some fun facts, I have been um, represented USA for a world bug battle cha challenge and I became uh, one of the three champions in 2014. Um, and I also a gym freak and I do a, a, a HT, a HIIT, which is high intensity interval training uh, in F45 and I'm four time winners, lost 51 pounds. I'm very proud of that. Um, this is my Twitter handle, Pretech Mom. I'm pretty active in Twitter. And um, recently, like after I started speaking, uh, it's my mission to prove to the world that there is no 100% bug free software. Very big companies have like biggest uh, quality engineering team, but we do often see a um, lot of bugs uh, in production. And two of the pictures I have attached here, left side is Yelp, while I was trying to book a restaurant. And I think right side is AMC um, stub um, app where uh, some unknown error happened. Um, but I'm going to tell you how we can avoid uh, critical bugs, but then there still will be um, uh, some some bugs in production that will make um, uh, to production, right? So if you follow my Twitter, you will see I, I use two hashtags. One is from Apply Tools, which is a visual bug of the day, uh, we gone wrong. So you will see all kind of different visual bugs and then production bug of the day where I find various production bugs in various um, other apps and I uh, post it there. 
want to start my talk with a small um, story. I, I know a lot of people have um, kids. I do um, have one and she's three years old. Um, so I get to go through a lot of um, these cartoon stories. And one of my favorite is Three Little Pigs. The summarization is uh, these three brothers were given a task to build home. And um, the one of them built within hours with straw. Um, the second one built in a day with woods, but the third one took days uh, to build with the solid infrastructure like brick. And when the wolf came, only everybody has to go and take shelter on the third brother's um, house because wolf could ca come into the straw house or the wood house. What I'm trying to convey is to build anything good, it takes time. Um, but today in a hyper growth startups, it's very challenging. And my topic of the day is to tell you how you're going to be acing um, quality engineering, automation engineering, but at the same time will not compromise um, the speed as well. So what is this term high performance testing? Definitely this is not about performance testing. Um, I came up with this because like I have been constantly working on some hyper growth startup where they are multiplying in number, they are um, shipping product super fast, but at the same time being the head of the quality, uh, it's always top of my team's mind like to achieve as much uh, uh, as much quality as possible, right? So the definition will be embracing the ever-changing startup mentality, be one step ahead and constantly providing high quality output without being burned out. Um, so if you think about a startup, some of the uh, characteristic that comes up is what is a startup? Like a lot of you might be working in one, right? Which can be like really small, about 10, 20 people or can be of our size, like good where we are 250 people team right now. Um, so it can be very chaotic where you will uh, need to be comfortable with change. Things change with like how the market is doing, what uh, user wants to use it, right? Um, so if you work in a startup, it's not like big company where you will get months and months uh, to think about product or release something. We release uh, almost uh, five to 12 times a day, depending on back end or front end, and that speed is crazy. So less time, like, we are always catching up. Like there are more work than resource, right? Um, less resource, like uh, veterans are mentor here. So if you work in a startup for three to six months, you already know in and out of that, where in bigger company, it takes years to learn about uh, a pipeline or even the infrastructure. Uh, market pressure I already touched upon. So it, it's like responsibility to assess risk is very, very important. Like as a quality engineering team, uh, it's not, only important for you to know how to test stuff but it's very very important to you to let your um, higher level people know what are the risks with going with that product right what you are thinking from a user um, accessibility perspective and then there is reward also to work in a startup right um, expedite learning excellent parts um, so it, it's a package um, that comes with it then let's talk about the why why do we need to uh, perform uh, in a very high level of like high performance level um, when we are being the quality engineering company for a startup, right? Um, so if you look at this slide, it shows the evolution that has happened in past uh, decade. Um, so we started with desktop package uh, thick client apps, um, which used to take months or even year um, to, uh release then we went on to the desktop and web responsive app and then it started like weekly release uh continuous integration and today we are into web app and mobile worlds like uh we went from annually quarterly monthly weekly to daily and sometimes now ad hoc whenever we need to release we just release we hot fix um so the change is pretty drastic that came right and also like there was change of process so in like 10 years ago people used to be waterfall like there were very um, defined stages qa had a lot of time to um, find uh, bugs and report it today like we are always rushed uh, we have to find uh, without like too much time right we have to we have to find times within that uh, small set of time that is given to us uh, we have continuous integration to support we have continuous delivery to support 
and also like previously people used to use proprietary single um, stack on premise um, softwares um, like hp uh, most of the time or uh, qtp and today we are we have so many open source tool um, we are utilizing. So we have to think about all this wise, why we need to be one step ahead, why we need to be uh, thinking about uh, being super um, fast and super uh, uh, very, very fast about delivering the um, testing, right? Uh, let's talk about the how. How can we um, deliver a very high, like how can we be the high performing team, quality engineering team, and what it requires, what tool is it requires, um, how can we achieve this? So I came up with a three step uh, heuristic. One is learn from failure. So if there is unclear requirement, if there is impossible de deadlines, if the projects are still behaving like in a waterfall fallish uh, manner, um, jot it down when you join a company, uh, when you're trying to set up the uh, quality engineering team, uh, then come up with a test heuristic. What you are gonna use to mitigate those failing point or pain points, right? Uh, use a mind map because we don't have time. You don't have to write test cases. Maybe use a mind map and go from there. Uh, use short term tool versus long term tool. You can do. Um, you can always divide and conquer, right? You don't have to have a proper framework from the beginning, but then you can divide your team in two way. One will be doing, doing dirty um, automation fast uh, to support maybe an ongoing release and one team will be working on frame, framework and they can achieve a long term scalable process. Then find bug early. Uh, shifting left is the like heuristic everybody talk about. So we came up uh, with something like having a shift left meeting and I even learned it from one of my conferences where we meet with the developer after each uh, development uh, of, of a product or feature and we talk about there to find the bugs early uh, so do we don't have to go through the lengthy process of documenting it in Jira, uh, going back and forth and, and then fixing it. Uh, then set, if, set achievable goals, um, playbooks and uh, muscle memory. So like everybody in your team should be knowing how to achieve um, a specific testing, right? It should not be a uh, reinvention every time somebody say, hey, you need to test this feature A, B, C. So having playbooks and, and training your team uh, make, makes or breaks the whole process. Then having a scalable, um, scalable uh, toolkit, um, like this team structure, and I'm gonna talk about it more in my later, side, uh, later slides. Um, being top of the industry standard. So a lot of people talk about uh, this tool is great, uh, Selenium is great, Cypress is great, but which tool is suitable for your company, your startup, like where you are, how many people do you have, what are their core competencies? So having a scalable toolkit based on the company you are working and the team you have uh, also is very important. Um, automation framework. First, find the strength of your team and then come up with the automation framework. And then it's very important to go with the industry and find the solutions which come up with AI and ML. And I'm very big believer of, of it. I know people talk, uh, people think these are all like fad word and uh, there is nothing into it. But as you go through my slides, you will see how uh, this kind of tool has helped us immensely to speed up our releases um, in GoodRx. <laughs> So a very big uh, important thing is uh, teamwork when it comes to quality engineering, the collaborative effort, a group uh, to achieve common goals. So when we talk about quality engineering, it's not about uh, QA doing the quality assurance, but it's about how the whole team is get, taking the approach um, uh, to make the quality engineering successful. And I want to talk about how the team has evaluated, evol evolved as well, right, uh, in past few decades. Um, so like from manual testing domination to how we have moved on where developers are testing, um, they're writing a lot of unit tests, they're writing even functional tests um, today, right? Uh, before we used to have dev and QA completely separate. Uh, then we Then the line, slowly became uh, very thin and now there is devops take uh, test take ops right and we as a whole team try to achieve continuous integration and continuous um, delivery so this team evaluation plays a very big role uh, to make your team 
uh, like a uh, very high performing team so you have to find the balance where like where your company stand today in this chart and then um, decide like what kind of team going to work for for you next was before we used to have service uh, team where it was centralized centrally organized they knew everything they could go and integrate with any project and they could deliver right but today we have like true agile teams where it's it belongs to a quad or clan and uh, they exclu exclusively have a product knowledge but they still think about the bigger picture and uh, they work with a particular team and and provide value to that particular team um let's talk about like i talked talked about a lot of um, leadership stuff that made um uh, quality engineering pretty successful let's talk about the automation part of it um so when it comes to automation like i would suggest go as much open source as possible um because it's uh, cost effective it's faster to ship um and it's easier to expand right um these are some of the again um uh some of some of the bullet point you can read which makes your automation framework um super stable and i'm going to showcase you uh, a real automation framework we are using in goodrx and how we have incorporated all these points like assertion on actions in initialization and cleanup um cross browser support um local versus cloud setups all these things has been incorporated and these are very bi uh, uh, big points that will make you successful in your um implementation let's next talk about some industry standards so again i told in my previous slides that lot of people talk about automation async automation but how many of us knows what async means how many of knows where industry is um, can anybody um, tell me what uh, the minimum sorry maximum test time um, should required for an automated test how it should um, work so i came up uh, um, this source labs, labs documents where they have went ahead and they have actually surveyed some of the biggest of their clients like visa and uh, mastercard and they came up with this four different uh, categories test quality test runtime test platform coverage and test concurrency so the benchmark are, um, benchmark is uh, the first one test quality 90% of your automation tests should always pass the second one is rest test runtime your test average time should be 2 minutes or less like each test right um test platform coverage you should know with your data that um what are your top five platform is and you should at least cover five different platforms using automation like cross uh, platform coverage uh, test concurrency if you use uh, concurrent nodes um, like source labs or browser stack you should be um, utilizing 75% of your uh, available test capacity so suppose you have chosen 75 nodes you should at least use 50 to 60 nodes every time you are running your test cases so when they came up with this four categories and they they surveyed one of the largest of their customers the the results were very interesting they they saw only 18.8% organization passed the first quality uh, first uh, thing that which is test quality only 35.9% of the organization um passed the 2 minutes or less test run time and 62.5% organization had test platform coverage and 70.9% um organization had test concurrency but the most interesting um fact is this one only 6.2% of the organization had achieved the benchmark of excellent in all four categories which is like fascinating we all talking about automation we are doing it for years still nobody knows how to ace it today and they have no idea uh, what are the benchmark we should be following so this is a very interesting um, finding by sos lab again like when they did the survey the the results are so fascinating on the speed there are companies which takes uh, where the test takes more than 7 minutes and 10.42% companies fall into that uh category 24.48% of the uh, companies fall into 3 to 7 minute which is pretty high and you are seeing only 35.9% are using 2 minutes or less so just uh just having automation does not help making that automation may, uh, meet this uh, uh excellency is, is very very important again when it comes to browser automation i think 
everybody's favorite uh, browser is Chrome. So you see like 65.5% of the people are using Chrome. Uh, there is very less coverage on Safari because it's most hard one to do and very less on Microsoft Edge as well. Um, so we still have uh, runtime to achieve um, this cross-platform coverage. Then when it comes to real mobile versus uh, desktop test, fascinating, only 8.1% of the companies are actually using mobile uh, devices to test. Uh, most of them are using like desktop browser, they resize it and then they, they test their mobile web. Uh, it makes a very big difference if you do like that. So if you really want to make sure your quality is is uh, top notch. You have to use a real, real mobile device and real uh, mobile browsers uh, to make sure that yes, your product is working as expected. So these are some of the uh, point I want to cover, which made uh, my team and uh, Goodarex uh, pretty successful. One is uh, shift right. So we, when there is a time crunch, what we do is we feature flag. Uh, we use Plit.io and we feature flag our um, features. We go to production and we actually test it on production. We ship faster when we are satisfied that yeah things are working on production. Then we open it up um, to the real user. Um, it has a lot of positive points. Uh, specifically depending on features, uh, because then you're sure that yes, that feature gonna work on a production environment because sometimes the staging and production environments uh, differs heavily. Um, the second thing we use is tri traffic allocation. So gradually we introduce the, uh, any feature to um, customers so that if there is major bugs, we could make sure that it's caught in between like maybe 5% to 10% user and we are not harming all our 100% user. Uh, has uh, been proven very helpful to find critical bugs, critical edge case bugs, which are very difficult to find in lower environment. Uh, and then dog fooding, uh, you guys know that Facebook always has a staging environment where uh, Facebook employees goes and use Facebook on, on lower environment. And we use something similar uh, using Fastly where uh, we route all our uh, internal users through our um, staging site, like one of the production side and then we test it and once we are uh, happy with it and then we open it so super simple um, implementations but makes or breaks your quality of a product the third thing i want to talk about is ai ml adoption uh, for async uh, automation right and there are so many tools in the market but some of the tools that we have uh, used and uh, being very successful in implementation is automated visual regression uh, as you know apply tools is the leader of that um, so what it does is it validates the look and feel of user experience so if you think about goodarix.com where you go and search for your medication and then there are 300 different pages where you can read about uh, medications where you can know what are the different uh, policies are against those medications there are so many things to be done so if i have only manual testing or release testing team they it will take six or more hours for them to go through all the uh, pages to make sure okay things are not breaking whereas this kind of tool gives us the leverage to run uh, automated check uh, within minutes and then uh, release every day multiple times. When I do my actual conference talk, I actually do this um, comparison. It's, it's like everybody loves it where you have to find uh, nine differences in 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be able to find it, but super tough to find nine different in 30 seconds by one individual. So usually how it happens in my conference, it takes more than two minutes for 30 people to find 30 differences. So what I try to um, convince them is that it's very, very important for a, a human eye to spot nine differences within 30 seconds. Is it possible? Yeah, if I stare at it for 10 minutes, I should be able to find maybe seven of it, right? Um, but how, again, speed is, one of the biggest uh, challenge in a startup world, right? So how do we um, find this difference? Again, Apply Tools is, is like a very big uh, example that, that helps us achieve this goal. If we do a normal uh, image comparison, like bit by bit, you, you can see what are the various differences, but it's not very convenient. Um, 
uh, using like open source or just um, bitmap uh, differences because uh, a website like goodrx.com where pricings are changing every day it's not feasible that we use that bit by bit comparison because then every time we run it it will fail um, so how does apply tools helps us um, achieving our goal so they do some ai driven image testing where their system learns as we run more and more cases right so we are feeding their system with data um, that okay this region is dynamic this region is non dynamic ignore this region or um, just test uh, one of the region of our website um, that comes brings me to the my third point like ignore region where we could select a dynamic region and say hey ignore this but check everything else they also provide us with different match labels like strict you can say on a particular page strictly validate everything is where it should be so they take a base image and every time we go to production they take another image and they compare it with base image and then they let us know um, how it is working um, then they have some others like content or um, exact layout where um, layout settings where you can just say hey just check the layout but don't check everything very strictly so that way you know yes where all the components were supposed to be on a page is there um so how this has helped us this has helped us um with our velocity of release as i told you um for manual qa it will take 6 hours to uh, finish a regression test um visually to make sure that all our pages are um right but using apply tools checks it takes us only uh, less than 12 minutes uh, to run almost 350 um, test cases which includes 2500 visual checks to make sure all our web pages are fine in cross browser web and mobile web pages oops uh, these are some of the example that uh, a tool like apply tools uh, will find bugs and these are actually my real uh, application so the middle is goodrx.com in our mobile web uh, some code snippet came in which uh, um, apply tools found on my right it's an amazon prime app where the image has gone missing and on the left it's a macy's app i actually have this talk um if see the uh, error message it's behind the button right so if you have a normal selenium test and you assert that am i do i see this error message it will give you false positive and say yes it's passed because it is present on the uh, app but it is actually hidden behind a button which uh, a tool like apply tools can um, find for you the second tool i want to demo is uh, reportportal.io so again like when you are trying to ace automation you have to know where you stand how your systems are behaving just writing test scripts and running them does not help uh, to build uh, trust uh, around your automation platform you have to showcase to your team that yeah this is how our platform is behave, uh, behaving and we chose this tool uh, reportportal.io this is a open source tool again they use machine learning uh, to show you how your system are behaving you can create different kinds of chart to know like what are your uh, average timing which time your test uh, performs the best which time it's doing retries the most um, uh, what are the automation bugs what are the system issues it can like give you very minute details which can again provide the trust your development team requires so the first example was how long our tests are taking on uh, different times of the day the second one it's telling us like how many total tests we run what was the start like what are the total time it took how many passed how many failed and how many we should be investigating um, so as you keep on feeding the system it gives you more and more sophisticated um, uh, data map and sophisticated uh, graphs where you can um, see what are the most flakiest tests what are the most longest tests and uh, that helps us immensely to make sh make sure that our automation is at par um, the test that needs to be taken care or refactor we are refactoring on time so that um, our team can release um, seamlessly Again, um, the third picture, it shows here exactly the log, what is going wrong with this failed test cases. So it's very, uh, so this is like a one um, stop shop where we can do multiple things. So developer doesn't have to run to Jenkins or our browser stack sessions to know like, why is it failing? They can see even the failure reason here uh, integrated. 
again we use bdd uh, for our test so here um, it's like super easy to ch uh, check like what are the steps we implemented what are the tags um, again super uh, easy to understand and very easy to know like exactly which test step it failed uh, which cross browser it ran um, again very very interesting so talked about all implementation i just want to briefly uh, touch base on the burned out that uh, i or many of my colleague has faced working in a very hyper growth uh, company right so when we have uh, a very big deadlines or like continuous uh, working days like how do we feel it's very very important that we talk about like um, what burnout feel like uh, these are some of the points you guys can read so when you see your colleagues some like they are dragging themselves to work they're critical about their work they they feel like less satisfied or uh, they like they seek help with like uh, alcohol or drugs uh, if these are the symptoms of um, burnout and uh, i think as an engineering lead it's our our responsibility to make sure when we are working in a hyper growth company we, we prevent the burnout we talk about all this uh, implementation tools how uh, we can ace uh, with this matrices but we never talk about how we should be um, taking care of our own team and how we will make sure that they are not feeling uh, burnout or they are not hopping from one company to other because they could not succeed in a hyper growth startup because it's always very very demanding so taking breaks often having a strong support system making uh, self care a priority saying no to too many projects and i myself have told a lot of my uh, peers that i may come out very irrational and uh, ask you for like a lot of uh, um, stuff come to me talk to me and make sure that you're not getting burned out uh, do something out of work uh, manage digital distraction avoid unachievable goal these are some of the very few points that um, want to help you um, preventing burnout and I, I made a part of it my talk because we are talking about hyper growth companies um, so it's super super important um, uh, that we uh, talk about it the last interesting topic is a case study about my company GoodRx where I work currently. Um, so again, as, as Adi told that we support more than 10 million, I think now right now 12 million customers um, a month. And uh, what we do is we are price transparency platform. People come here on our homepage, they search for uh, drugs and they can go to a price page and they can see where they should be going to get their um, pricing. What, who are the main customers? Um, the, so the main customers are people who does, do, do not have uh, insurance or people who have very high deductible insurance. So sometimes you have to pay hundreds of dollars be, before your insurance benefit kicks in, whereas uh, GoodRx can be very beneficial where you can just come and use our coupon and get your prescription drug. Uh, field. We also launched a good RX care, which is a telemedicine platform, and uh, it helps user um, see a doctor with just as uh, low cost as like five dollar or twenty dollar, depending on what kind of service you are uh, using. Um, so when we have such a big volume of customer quality is very very important, right? Because if our site is down for five minutes, that means few hundred thousand dollars. Um, so when we I build this team, uh, I came up with some of the goals that helped immensely. Um, so distributed QA support 24 by 7, uh, dedicated SD team which, who specialize in writing test automation, some robust framework that's going to work for our development team as well, a test stabilization pipeline where we make sure when we are continuously writing our test, we are not breaking the actual tests. Um, then we the last one was 100% automation support to reduce regression time by 90% and uh, we have achieved that for GoodRx dot com products so next when i joined this company the goal was to hire um, a, a class uh, team right and this uh, page from linkedin has helped me immensely when we looked for particular um, employees like particular teammate like what all we look for so if it is uh, qa engineers the analytical skills are very important how they can think about the um, 
uh, a test strategy. Whereas when we uh, when we uh, hire for estates, how, how much they do about CI/CD pipeline implementation, how how good they are with programming language automation experience. So all this um, matters a lot. Again, you can uh, take a look um, and and get yourself acquainted like how um, you can utilize this point when you're hiring uh, a class team. Then after I hired my team, I uh, after evaluating their strength, we came up with this tech stack. We use today we use um, Python Selenium web driver, behave as a BDD um, browser stack as our cloud um, runner, Apply tools as our visual um, regression. Uh, Jenkins and uh, Travis, we are actually using uh, Google Drone as well um, for our CI, and then Jira test rail for our um, documentation. The CI/CD pipelines uh, uh, success criteria we came up with uh, was this four in like divided in this four category. We needed speed, so we added parallel parallelization. We wanted everybody like product and developer to understand our test super simply without looking at our code. That's why we implemented BDD layer. We have all top uh, eight cross browser support uh, in our CI/CD pipeline, and obviously we have visual validation, which is providing immense um, support. Then how do our uh, QA CI CD pipeline works? We have hourly run. These numbers are little dated because it's from 2019. Uh, we right now have 140, 150 test cases, I think, which runs hourly, uh, which are like uh, critical path. Then we have pipelines. Whenever a developer uh, pushes a code to our staging environment, we go six cross browser and make sure our critical business paths are running um, fine. Then we have even nightly, weekly runs, which make sure uh, all, all the regular tests are fine and you can evoke any one of this pipeline manually as well whenever ad hocly you need it then this is a, a screenshot from our um, browser stack um, admin panel so it shows like last one year we have ran 2.6 million tests and uh, it's a lot like at least in my career i have worked for very few companies where we could achieve this kind of volume uh, in one year and when i'm uh, so uh, how we achieve this i just want to show you a timeline um so in june 18 there was only one qa engineer in in good Rx. in october i get hired as a manager then uh, we scale 300 percent we got an offshore team um in october 2008 we fully automate uh, p0 p1 we integrate with spinnaker pipeline we add cross, cross browser support real mobile test um, by December, we scaled another 300%. We added more team members. Uh, we added all the edge cases in goodrx.com. And uh, then end of, um, sorry, beginning of 2019, we start doing automation-driven releases for major um, product. Then the part two is uh, burnout happened, two engineers quit. Uh, that was a very big opening, uh, eye-opening time for me. Th then I go back, reevaluate with our um, higher level people, like how we will be achieving more work-life balance. So we scale more, uh, we add more support. Um, uh, today in 2020 and late 2019, our goal is to go 100% mobile app automations and we are uh, gearing it up rapidly. So I showed you very big, uh, some big numbers like 2.5 million tests in one year, and uh, that number is supported by our framework, which is developed by my automation team and Vaha, Nicholas, uh, Saleh. They are the people, they are the brain uh, behind it, who has come up with uh, such a uh, awesome, sophisticated framework. Some of the core uh, key component I want to highlight here is uh, how we have implemented our browser class. So we do not use Selenium own uh, uh, functions, right? Or their own click or like inbuilt click. Everything is wrapped in our browser base class. Um, so even if it is a simple go back, go to, or even refresh, um, it is wrapped uh, such a way that when we are uh, using that click for native app, it will behave differently. When we are using it for mobile web, it will behave differently. So that makes this super stable. Then we use page object model, like very clearly we can uh, maintain all the um, 
uh, elements here and all the functions related to a particular page. This is again an example and you see we have very clean expats because our developer helps us create this data QA ID in our uh, applications. So it is inbuilt in our development process and whenever they're creating a feature, they will go ahead and give us hooks so that we can come up with this clean um, expats and uh, it, it makes our uh, automation super stable. Then element wrapper class, um, something my automation team uses uh, called lazy loading. So we do not call the browser class every time we are trying to perform an action on an element. We just we just call this find element uh, function and pass the expats to it. And whenever we are trying to do a, a action on an element and it speeds up our test uh, very, very um, highly, um, that has been a very helpful feature for this particular framework. And the last one I want to showcase is Apply Tools Check Window Wrapper. Um, so one of uh, give a tips that I learned from again uh, my automation team is whenever you're using a third party SDK, it's super important you wrap it inside your framework. Otherwise, whenever they increase their SDK numbers and do some breaking changes on their functional functionalities, it's gonna break your own uh, framework, right? So this is an example of how you should be wrapping a third party um, SDK so that uh, you can upgrade on your own time if they are changing the way they uh, do a certain uh, functionality. This is a holistic uh, view of how our whole automation framework works. Um, we have a reporting dashboard. Again, I went through all the different components um, pre uh, previously in my desk. So we use Selenium, Apply Tools, uh, Blaze Meter for API. Um, we have um, feature files, which is BDD, step definition, page objects, uh, visual validation, uh, driver, driver wrappers. Uh, we keep our test data in a JSON file. And again, this is the whole thing is inspired uh, from internet. Like this is not my own design, uh, but this was a very cool way to show you how our whole ecosystem, test automation ecosystem um, work. And uh, good, Alex. And that will be it. Thank you so much for listening to me for the last uh, 40 minutes. Um, I'm open to any questions you have. Yeah, sure. So we do have some questions. Um, uh, so we'll take it from the top. So uh, you started with uh, the Sauce Labs flow chart uh, that you showed at the beginning, showing the evolution of the of release velocity. Right. Uh, so we got two questions about that. We the first one was what what was the on demand release model, and what is the fast waterfall model? If you could explain a bit about each one. Sure. Um, so on demand is like what we do today. So there are some uh, product team, at least inside GoodRx, which does not have to have a cadence. Like in previous days, when we work in a agile environment, we said, okay, we're going to follow sprint, end of uh, two week sprint, we're going to release. But now it's very ad hoc, right? So whenever a small feature or small bug fix is ready, they can ad hocly go ahead uh, using CI CD pipelines and they can push their code anytime they want and how do a lot of companies have done this for a long time but like a small startup like us it's a big deal because it's so complex uh, our system it's if a team a is pushing something in production it can break something for team b and how do we make sure that uh, the quality is top notch through this kind of automation uh, giving them the power that they can do ad hoc releases anytime using help of ci cd um, cross automation uh, cross browser automation cross device automation um, help and again i think fast uh, um, what was that the last one fast uh, what fast was the well, yeah, water. fast, fast waterfall i think was a little more evaluation uh, from the waterfall model where they were using some kind of v model um, where uh, test will start along with product so when product finish writing their um, test cases i'm sorry requirement tester will be parallelly writing their test cases when developer will be developing then test automation will be trying to test automation team will be trying to automate the test so they will go parallelly to um, 
make the SDLC a little faster. But again, this works in a very big giant uh, corporations where they have a lot of time. Uh, today we are super agile and like we like to do ad hocly without any rules, um, more agile-ish way. So next question is, uh, do you have any suggestions for functional automation tools driven by either MI or machine learning? Uh, from your experience or from your colleagues' experience? Uh, I would be honest, I haven't used any uh, functional um, automation tool which is um, like driven by machine learning. Selenium is very, very popular uh, in today's world, so we have been using Selenium. Uh, but I think Cypress is getting um, super... Um, what do you say like cypress is getting very very popular right these days and uh, apply tool is coming up with something called visual grid uh, where you can just run cypress you know cypress works in um, uh, chrome only right so you can just run the test in chrome and they're gonna capture all the doms and they're gonna surface it in all other kind of various cross browser and you can get within seconds um, the results in in different cross browsers so there are definitely various uh, reading on apply tools blog uh, where they're just launching this service where you can use uh, something like selenium or cypress um, as your functional tool but then you can use a mi driven um, system like apply um, to do cross browser very fast uh, but i haven't used any other tool i know there are, there is um, something that jason uh, aburn is working on um, there are some tools uh, like Ma what is that M M A L B uh, mabel mabel uh, but they are more like a record and playback and we haven't used it uh, in, in my career at least. Uh, next question. Uh, we are using Cucumber uh, in our framework and I often hear from my colleagues that Cucumber has a lot of limitations and needs a lot of step definitions. How do you overcome that? Uh, we are not using Cucumber. We are using uh, equivalent of Cucumber in Python, which is called Behave. Uh, when you talk about limitation, I'm not sure exactly what limitation they're talking about, but it's, it's very simple. It's just an added layer for us where the test cases are written in simple English, and then they are implemented behind the back using Python. We haven't come across any limitation implementing whole automation suite uh, in goodrx.com. But again, if you are not writing non-functional test, I would suggest go with PyTest um, so that like you, are, you don't have the extra layer of BDD. But again, that's my personal opinion. Uh, but in, in our implementation, we haven't come across any limitations so far. When starting automation for the very first time, should it be directly started with framework development? No, absolutely not. Like when you are thinking about automation, you need to do a POC, proof of concept. Um, so have like minimum base structure for your automation framework, not um, vastly implemented. Like you can use the Selenium's own clicks to start with. You don't have to wrap it up. Uh, you don't have to have very sophisticated way of elements handling, but uh, touch the core components of that framework um, or the drivers and then um, do a POC like proof of concept with at least 30 to 40 tests like if you plan to write 3000 tests in a long run and make sure that you are touching all the points that you are trying to achieve right uh, does it support cross browser does it run within two minutes does it uh, can I run this test on a mobile uh, devices so make sure you are touching all this point uh, does it feed in my uh, reporting uh, um, a tool. So once you are satisfied with all these checkpoints, then you go ahead and implement your proper um, framework um, after you're satisfied with your POC. And then slowly you take a step to make it more solid. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the framework you use for mobile automation? Uh, I saw that you use Appium, but do you use anything else? And if not, how did you or why did you choose Appium? for your mobile automation testing sure. needs. Sure. Um, so again, our base automation framework is exactly same. So we use Behave, Python. Um, in, in mobile case, we use APM and uh, Apply tools. Um, but why did we choose 
um, uh, APM and not XUnit or Expresso because our first goal is to mimic uh, the user um, behavior and that uh, and speed up our manual tests, right? What our manual, uh, like the release engineers are doing, release QA engineers are doing. So for that very reason, we have chosen uh, APM and we have chosen to do the uh, test using APM. But in long run, when we uh, move towards um, CI CD for our app teams, we do have plan to uh, implement um, XE unit and Expresso so that uh, they can run them in each push. But uh, because our first goal is to mimic user uh, experiences that's why we went with uh, apm where can i find more information about wrappers i think there are pretty uh, good blogs python blogs um, that talk about um, uh, different kind of wrappers um, you can implement um, i can suggest you go to apply tools university um, they have awesome uh, courses about automation and various uh, steps of automation um, and i can get back to um, adi on specific urls where you can find this Thanks. Um, so we have another uh, question about AI and machine learning. Um, what about your experience or suggestions in leveraging AI or machine learning uh, tools for API automation or calling extensively some local processes? I do not, at this very point, I do not have any experience uh, with an AI, a machine learning tool for API automation, but would love to know about it. Um, in the in the chart that you showed, I think it was the it was the Sauce Labs uh, um, uh, chart that you showed with the testing metrics. Mm -hmm. uh, people are asking about the name of the tool uh, that chose those metrics. It's not a tool; it's a survey that they did. It's it's not a tool that showcases what it should be. So they came up. So they surveyed uh, some of the biggest companies and they tallied the number like where everybody is and where should be the benchmark. But I don't think they used any tools to come up with those benchmark. And uh, hopefully I saved uh, the best for last. I don't know. At least that's mm -hmm. now the last question that we have, um, and it's a biggie. Um, so you showed uh, the LinkedIn uh, skills and capability uh, mm -hmm. that you're looking for when you are hiring uh, mm -hmm. QA engineers, and mm -hmm. people are asking, and people are asking if you could go back to that slide and just elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, they want to know what are the deal breakers. Uh, in terms of capabilities, knowledge, tools, qualifications, uh, coding abilities uh, that you look for when you hire QA engineers, uh, what are the things that are nice to have versus must-haves? Uh, so if you could just spend a little bit, uh, we have another four minutes, so if you could spend a little bit of more time on that slide, just uh, give more input as a, as a manager. Absolutely. Um, so I will again take example of my current company, GoodRx, how we hire people and we have grown from one QA engineer to now total 13 uh, QA engineer and estate uh, and total 20 actually if I count my offshore team. So there are very different process as I mentioned when I was um, going through this um, slide that when it comes to QA engineer versus software developer in test, uh, the first step is to jot down what are the job description is and if you go to our site right now I have a senior um, SDAT opening for our San Francisco location so you will see a detailed job description what we are lo looking for what are the mandatory skills we are looking for some of them will be like JavaScript is mandatory Python programming for uh, at least three years is mandatory uh, knowing how to create a framework is mandatory uh, for SDATE level. But again, when it comes to QA engineer, knowing BDD uh, is a very plus point. But again, showing us that you can learn uh, BDD is also um, will be doable if you want to get hired in this team. Uh, showing us how your analytical skill is very, very important as a QA engineer. Again, you will ask like, how do you know that what the, the candidate is saying they they know it so for that we have a specific um, a homework challenge that we give out to everybody and then the person if the 
the person passes the homework round, they come on site with the homework and we actually tell them to modify the homework. So suppose for QE, if we tell them, okay, go to goodrx.com and write a high level uh, test strategy, how you will be testing the homepage. When they come on site, we tell them, okay, now convert them in BDD. We first maybe show them 15 minutes or 10 minutes how to write uh, behavioral driven test cases and then we ask them to write it and it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect but i want to see that yes uh, they can jump onto the problem um, without being feared that i don't know something or i'm not super technical about it uh, but they can embrace the uh, change super soon. Uh, one more thing we see is uh, coaching and leadership skill when we are hiring senior engineers. Um, uh, how how their personality is? Do they like to uh, talk to junior people? Will they be able to gel with them and show them the path uh, that they have already gone through? How they gonna uh, think about the big picture? So all this matters. And again, when it comes to SDA, they do a uh, programming challenge for goodrx.com where they come up with a small framework on our website and show us that they understand page object model. They understand wrapper classes. They understand um, sending data to a reporting uh, portal, all these small things. And when they come on site, they prove that, yes, they have done the homework themselves. And we actually ask them to add one or two test cases um, on that specific framework and ask them to run us through the framework or maybe optimize it. And that has helped us in immensely to hire uh, top class um, employees. Uh, great. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, that unfortunately, uh, that's all the time that we have for today. Um, so I do want to thank everyone that joined us for this live session, first of 2020. And of course, I want to thank our speaker, Priyanka Holder, for this uh, in-depth and super, super interesting presentation. Uh, just a quick reminder before I let Priyanka say her goodbyes, uh, the link to the recording of this session will be emailed to you by uh, end of day Monday. And uh, I see a lot of people um, asking about, again, Selenium, Appium, wrappers. Uh, please check out Test Automation University. That's testautomationu.com. Uh, there are a lot of free online courses uh, that you can uh, take uh, and also, of course, get the certificate uh, to show off on, on LinkedIn and you know, on your resume after you're, you, you have completed the course. Uh, so that's uh, Test Automation University headed by uh, and the amazing Angie Jones, of course. Uh, so thank you. And uh, Priyanka, uh, obviously the stage is yours to say your goodbyes. Um, yeah, I, I want to thank every one of you who joined today. Also, I want to thank my whole team and in GoodRx and Apply Tools. I, I think these are the people who make uh, a small person like me successful um, giving these talks and showing how much we have achieved. I specifically want to take out a few names. Um, Vahan Melikai, Nicholas Hodali, Saleh, Saleh um, Kadan. They are like the main pillar in my team um, who has built this automation and who, who even has taught me how to ace uh, in this, um, this genre and in this high speed hyper growth startup. Also a, a very big thank to Audi and uh, Dustin uh, from Apply Tools for giving me this opportunity um, to talk about uh, my experience. Thank you so much and please follow me in Pre-Tech uh, Pre Mom in Twitter and ask me any question there if I haven't answered it today here. Thank you so much and have a wonderful year ahead.